There we go. Okay. All right. So, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm really happy you guys could join us today. You know, we never thought this would be possible because, you know, it's one of those things where fans kind of idolize the voice actors or characters from their favorite like shows or movies or games. So to have this opportunity to talk to you guys is really amazing. Um, and as most of you know, the 10 year anniversary of Amnesia the Dark Descent is coming up in September, as, um, as well as a new sequel that will be released known as Amnesia Rebirth this coming fall. So we decided to host this interview as a way to kind of commemorate that and um, celebrate this iconic game as you know longtime fans and supporters of frictional games so with that said i'd like to give a warm welcome to you guys um today we have joining us mr richard topping who voiced daniel in the game hi lauren hello <laughs> and mr sam maury who voiced alexander the enemy of daniel <laughs> um so thank you so much for joining us um so before we move on to questions, let me give a brief introduction to Frictional. They are a growing game development company based in Malmo, Sweden. Um, they were founded in 2007 by Thomas Grip and Jens Nilsson, and they are well known for their survival horror titles, including Amnesia, the Penumbra series, um, and their most recent title, Soma, which came out in 2015, and of course, Rebirth, which is coming up. So, yeah, I'd like to hand the mic off to Katz, who will give us a little background on you guys so people know, you know, what's going on. Yeah, um, well, thank you, Richard and Sam, for joining us today. We're glad to have you. Before we get started, though, I would like to introduce our guests to the audience today. So, Richard Topping is currently a chemistry teacher at North Clackamas High School in Portland, Oregon. Before that, though, he was an actor and appeared in films including Acting Up, Hell or High Water, and The Importance of Being Earnest. He has also written several books, including Monty Python: on a Celebration and Kenny and Me. Sam A. Mowry is a professional actor and director, and um, he is the founder and director of the Willamette Radio Workshop. Um, Mr. Mowry has an impressive number of roles and productions on his resume and has been in video games such as Dota 2, um, League of Legends, Infamous, and Penumbra. Um, we are bo so both Richard Topping and, Ms. and Sam Mary have been uh, generous enough to join us in this amazing celebration of the 10th anniversary of Amnesia the Dark Descent. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess I'll start off with the questions. Um, the first thing, you know, we've been dying to know is how was it working with Frictional Games? Um, and would you guys ever do it again? Uh, well, shall I kick this one off, Sam? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, so uh, one of the, the great unsung heroes of this game uh, was Mark Rose, who was the sound engineer that was really our interface with Frictional Games. Um, and we actually had very little, I, well, I, I personally had very little to do with the game developers themselves. They communicated their vision to Mark, uh, and then Mark went out and found people that he thought would be good for the parts and we auditioned for it. Um, and Mark took over the whole management of the voice recording process. He's a very, very good sound engineer. He's a voice actor himself. Uh, he has a company called Fuse that uh, does a lot of sound design for radio shows. And so for me, really, my work was with Mark. Um, and he's, as a voice actor himself, he's, he's very good at really steering the performances the way that he wanted them to go. Um, and usually a good sign of, of how well you, you meet the developer's requirements is, is how much you have to redo when you get called back the second time. And um, I think on this job, I don't think I went back to the studio. I think we, we got it all in, in one day. Um, and then Mark sent it off. Um, and then to be honest, I kind of forgot about it. Um, you know, when you'd work on these, 
video games, you tend to, it's, it's a very peripatetic sort of existence. You get a, a spreadsheet with these lines in there that don't really connect to anything else. Uh, this, this job was different because it, it certainly Daniel's diary was, was great expansive uh, stretches of, of dialogue that you don't normally get to do in a video game. Uh, so it, it was a different job in that respect, but I forgot about it and went away. And then about six months later, the internet exploded with amnesia. And suddenly I had people texting me saying, hey, you're Daniel from Amnesia. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? Um, so yeah, it was a very positive experience. Yeah. Incredible. Yes, well, I have to echo uh, the work of Mark Rose. Uh, he has a, a podcast out right now called Fusebox. If you get a chance to check that out, he produces it, writes it, and voice acts in it as well. And also uh, for me, Alani Manella was very uh, important for me and Mark uh, to, to hook up with Frictional and uh, when we did Penumbra and some of the other titles with them, um, Lonnie is, uh, she has done over 500 games as an actor and director and uh, she's just an amazing lady. And, uh, but Mark is, is brilliant to work with because he always makes everything seem effortless. You know, he's just uh, completely positive and especially when you're doing a, a game like this, which can be darker and, uh, uh, it can be a little, a little uh, daunting sometimes to um, uh, spend any amount of time in that kind of dark mindset. Uh, we don't all get to be the hero, Richard. Uh, <laughs> I mean, was but, Daniel really the hero? Well, you no know. Was, okay. mm, yeah. uh, hero, hapless victim. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very thin line. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much life in general. <laughs> but um, but Frictional was actually a great game and a great company to work for in terms of every time I've worked with them. Um, very clear, um, very, uh, uh, like Richard was saying, when they they communicate to Mark and to Lonnie and to the people who are interacting with us so clearly that we're able to go in and it's as if they're there. And I've done other games when we did uh, Dota 2 where you had an engineer, a director, and a couple of writers, and they're all there. <laughs> and sometimes we spend more time in between lines talking about one line as all five people have to weigh in uh, with what they're looking for out of that line. And um, it, it can, uh, uh, you know, it makes for a longer day. And I think that's why Richard's able to get everything done so quickly uh, with such a huge part because they're clear in knowing what they wanted and they, you know, you get good talent and you have good people, uh, directing you and producing it. And, uh, you know, I never felt any pressure, um, but always felt like we were, you know, hitting it out of the park. And then as Richard said, six months later, uh, evidently we did. <laughs> um, so moving on, since we're kind of on the subject of fictional games, um, do you know anything about the coming release of Amnesia Rebirth? No, I, this, I've heard it through you guys. Uh, this is... Ah. I immediately started checking my email. Aren't they trying to reach me? Uh, mm. It seems like Alexander does not make a return. So. No, sadly not. Unfortunately not. not. It uh, takes I, place as... Oh, sorry. But it takes place, as far as I know, a couple decades into the future. I want to say the 1930s, but don't quote me on that. 1937. Something like that, Algeria. yeah. In Algeria, where amnesia basically started. I mean, off screen, if that makes sense. But Yeah, well, I actually, um, my, my agent contacted me about a month ago and said that Frictional, uh, as a last minute idea, were toying with the idea of having a little cameo from Daniel uh, in Ooh. this version. Uh, and we, we were in discussions for a couple of weeks, but the, the production schedule just didn't allow it to happen. Um, so they did say they might put that idea on the back burner. So who knows, at some point, Daniel might uh, return from the dead. Oh, no. I think we might all die if that happens. <laughs> yes, we will. I mean, that's kind of nice little insider information. You have to keep that little hush hush in case something does come out of that. I better thing. not talk about it on a Zoom call or a podcast, had I? Otherwise, I'll be in all sorts of trouble. Games is going to see. 
And then, oh. wait a minute, you weren't supposed to tell them. <laughs> Bye, Richard. Okay, um, since we're on the subject of the characters, do you guys recall your favorite scene to record? And what was like the most memorable part of that? Well, for me, it's like, I mean, it took Richard, Richard had a day. I literally think my entire session was about 45 minutes. Um, and uh, what I what I most remember was just kind of uh, once we kind of hit the groove as to what the what the attitude was, uh, it all just went very quickly. And as in most games, the most memorable moments are are the various uh, screams and flailings and dyings are always the uh, the 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 most fun. And you always save those for last so that you can totally blow out your voice and uh, be ready to go. So, um, you know, that's the, and the other thing is, is like with my character, you know, much less uh, tied into the, the, the narrative and more just kind of scenes and things happening. So um, I, I'm, I've always loved old time radio um, and that's why we have the Willamette Radio Workshop. And we, uh, uh, I, I love the imagination aspect of it. Uh, they often call uh, radio theater, theater of the imagination. And that is a great uh, stepping stone for video games. Because while we have a very strong visual component, when we're doing it, we rarely get to see any of the, I mean, I didn't see any of the visuals for this when we were doing it. So it's all up to us to create it in our minds. And um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, just the, uh, I, I, I thought the material was just incredibly, uh, I'd never done anything like that before. I'd done a lot of horror and, and suspense kind of games, but this one really did seem to be kind of in a whole nother category. And uh, was kind of at times. Did did they really mean for us to say that? Is that what's supposed to happen here? Uh, mm. <laughs> sure about that. They're going to get letters. Uh, um, Newton no, is definitely a pioneer in the horror game industry. It actually kickstarted the whole survival horror genre. So it's understandable that it's really I don't know left a really big imprint. Mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. Yeah, or at least unarmed survival games yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean I, i'll echo what sam said that doing voiceovers for games is is very weird it's not like um it's not like even doing a radio play or anything because it's so uh it's so chopped up into little pieces so um and as Sam pointed out, you save all the awful sounds for the end. And some of the descriptions you get in the spreadsheets are, are quite funny. You know, you know, so you have a scream and it, it's described, eviscerated by broadsword, covered in boiling oil, stabbed in neck with pitchfork, right? So oh. you gotta, you got to try and get your head around all these awful, terrible ways to die. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for, certainly for Daniel's story arc, I mean, it, it's, again, you don't get a story arc generally when you're doing a video game. Um, when when Daniel really loses it and, and really starts to go mad, I mean that was that was quite intense because you you really want to feel those emotions. You 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 know you really want to uh, be in that mindset. You don't want to pretend to be going mad. You want to actually feel like you are going mad. Um, so it was pretty intense at time. And like I said, it took us best part of a day to get most of that dialogue wrapped up. Um, but I did feel quite weird and creepy that evening. I seem to remember. <laughs> One of the things I love about, uh, you were talking about the, the descriptions of the deaths. <laughs> I remember many a conversation with Mark about kind of like, oh, okay, well, no, if if they eviscerated, now doesn't that mean that they've cut into my diaphragm so I wouldn't have any, any, any lungs to be able to do that? If they stuck me in the neck with a pitchfork, do I assume that it misses my vocal cord so you can still hear something? Or is it if I got sort of a gurgling kind of? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have a I have a quick question. Like, what did they tell you to, when you were doing the scream? Since I know both Daniel and Alexander can indeed die at the end, what did they tell you basically? Like, how do you describe getting killed by a cosmic entity? Like, how do you do that? I mean, that, well, that's really what Mark is very good at. He, you know, he'll let you just 
come up with something yourself and then he'll very gently steer you in a direction that he thinks might be productive. Um, and, and that's why I like working with him. Uh, and as Sam pointed out earlier on, there is nothing worse than being in a studio where you're being directed by a committee because person A says one thing and person B says the exact opposite. And then person C says, that was brilliant, but let's do it 20 times again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so I like the intimacy of a kind of a one person studio and, and the fact that um, Mark really lets you develop the character yourself and then distills out of that the things that he thinks the game developers are gonna be looking for. Hmm. And also, I mean, one of the, I, I mean, I've worked with Mark on radio uh, he's a member of the Willamette Radio Workshop as well. And we, uh, one of the things that we tend to do is to kind of talk about, you know, like I was saying earlier, okay, if you get stabbed here, this is how it's going to affect your wind pipe and uh, how you would, how you would. So, so things like being, you know, eviscerated on a cosmic level uh, are kind of like, you know, does that start high? Does that start low? Is it an immediate pain? Is it a growing? Is it a building? Is it a radiating? And we would just kind of experiment and see what we could come up with. And uh, Mark is also a brilliant sound designer. He's won an Emmy and such. Um, and, you know, he could, oh, I can take what you're doing. I can do something with that. And he'll add effects afterwards to what you're doing and uh and again as richard always points out that because he is also a voice actor he understands what you need and what you can do and um uh, and that's oddly enough you wouldn't think it would be uh necessary but a lot of people who do video games don't really know what voice actors do or can do you know they're kind of like oh i'm casting you as this and that's that's all you can do and um you know, for, for some of us, it's, uh, you know, kind of crazy making because we spend our, our lifetime developing our our repertoire of, of voices and dialects and and such. And it's just kind of... Uh, uh, Limiting. Yeah. It, it will, and it's just for people to not even assume, uh, you know, when a lot of times in voice work, I, I remember auditioning for a, a, a commercial and I was talking to the producer after it, and they've gone with somebody else, and they said, oh, we loved your read, but we wanted somebody who could read it faster. Like, really? I can read it faster. <laughs> you only have to ask. <laughs> and I, well, there's a thousand ways to read something. I can only give you one at a time. Uh, so working with people with imagination and people who are in the business and know what it's like to be an actor makes it a lot easier and again good thing for frictional in terms of you know hiring good people that's uh you know a lot of times these days everything is just dollar driven you know what's the absolute cheapest way to go and you know i understand that as a producer myself but um you know take the time to get the right people and you'll have much greater success i mean we've seen you know bad voice acting before so I think it's better to invest into people yeah, no, who can no, give you quality. I was last night. I was I was reading reading up on the game, and I was kind of there's this one big review that referred to us as a very mediocre voice talent. Oh, you wow. guys, you, you two are not mediocre. You're both. Listen, amazing. you're some of the best voice actors I have personally seen in the gaming industry. So I have no idea what they were talking about. Well, that. luckily sure. everyone gets their own opinion, and we appreciate yours. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know what they say about opinion, Sam. Everyone has them. Okay, so I guess this can lead into our next question. What, when recording your lines for Daniel and Alexander, what did they have you do when you were recording a conversation with one another? Because I imagine it would be kind of difficult to get that flow if you're not in the same studio, which is what I'm understanding. I think this is going to, you know, turn into the Mark Rose love fest. Because, um, uh, I mean, the way, it, the way it worked for me is, uh, you know, Mark would just give me my line when we had a, a series going on. And, uh, again, because he's an excellent actor, uh, you know, he, uh, I believe he actually put on a, a British accent to uh, sim stimulate Richard while we were... Uh, 
while we were working together. But it's a, you know, I've had, uh, it when in this particular game we were able to do that, I've worked other games where you just have to do it in your head, mm-hmm. you know. And then the games that are really the hardest are the ones where they're just going, no, just do that line. Now do that line five times. Again and again okay. and again. And let's move on. And you're just kind of like, I have no idea what's happening. You're really at the whims of the uh, the editor to see how they put it together and it's always kind of interesting when you when you see the finished game and you're kind of like oh that's the way they went with me um because it's usually at least two or three takes uh, on every individual line um but uh, sometimes on on scenes that have a lot of back and forth dialogue if you have a good engineer who's willing to uh, put in there that extra effort of acting with you you can really get kind of a, a better flow, as you were talking about. At least I find it. Yeah, I, absolutely. So Mark did the same thing with me. So he took Sam's lines um, and made it more conversational. It's a little bit contrived in that uh, you always have to, in a normal conversation, you might start talking just as the other person tails off. Um, but in the studio, you need to have a clean in and out. So you have to put in these kind of little beats between the lines of the dialogue so that the sound engineer can get a nice cut at either end. So that makes it slightly contrived. Um, but if if you just imagine that you like to think about everything before you say it, then it tends to work for me. Um, so yeah, Sam and I were never in the same room. Yeah. Wow. So impressive. Oh, one time I, I was working on a game where they actually flew me down to LA to be in the same booth with the, uh, the I was I was playing this avatar of a character in the game, and so they wanted us in the same booth. So we're we're sitting there in the booth, and we're you know he's an actor, stage actor as well, and so we're kind of like cool. This doesn't happen very often, and we start going, and we're as Richard was saying, you're kind of layering over each other and anticipating and jumping on, and they're like, oh wait 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 no you need to you need to leave a space in between every line and we both just stop and kind of look at each other and say we could do this from home then we don't need to be in the room if we're not going to be well no we think there's a certain energy it's like okay yeah sure uh, <laughs> well at the least they did for you to go to down down. Down. <laughs> they were like can we bring you down i said i think we could probably just do this via isdn uh if that's okay mm-hmm. so um all right, so that was interesting. <laughs> I, I would never have guess, I, I guess it would make sense and that's how you would do that, especially since fictional games is all the way in Sweden. Um, so um, were you given any information on the characters when you got the, kind of got the role? Like did they give you a synopsis or any hints at how the story would go? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I, I had a slight advantage in that Daniel's diary is pretty much the story, right? Mm-hmm. So simply by reading my lines, I was I was able to get a pretty good grip on on where the story was going and the, the character story arc and all that kind of stuff. Um, but but that was it. Um, and I'm sure Sam will back this up. And, you know, 99 times out of 100. Uh, you walk into the studio and and all you get is a spreadsheet with lines on it. Uh, so background is 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 fairly rare. Mm. Mm. This is true, and um, uh, you know, especially with with something like this. I mean, they could they could go on for days, um, you know, discussing the backstory and the the depth of everything that's going on, and mm-hmm. and sometimes that gets a little uh, daunting. Um, and I think for voice actors like Richard and myself, it's more kind of just uh, we enter with a an open mind and a quick wit and the uh, willingness to try anything. So um, uh, I don't need to to have a whole lot of of information. You know, just set the scene as to where we are and what's happening, and just let us go. And I think that leads to some interesting and unexpected choices um, that a lot of times the the writers, I mean, I've worked games where the writers have been right there and they're kind of like, wow, I never thought of that. Like, but the way you read it just really works. And, um, you know, so that's, uh, 
that's I, a lot of that comes through in this. I think the the there's not a lot of the kind of uh, uh, darker, fun, light, fun moments uh, kind of come out of uh, you know uh, our sense of uh, our our sense of humor. I was I was fascinated to see that you wrote a book on Monty Python, Richard, because <laughs> we're both very big Python fans. Uh, so um, yes. I was very lucky to uh, get that gig. It uh, gave me an excuse to watch every Monty Python show and every Monty Python film and get paid for it. So nice. <laughs> that sounds That's like the a dream. dream. Living the dream. Right. I, think, uh, I think it was amazing you guys were able to embody the characters the way that you did because Amnesia wouldn't be Amnesia without the voice acting, without you bringing those characters to life. So it really kind of adds a whole new dimension to the game, to the story, to the whole feel of it so thank you very much thank you yeah. well and as sam pointed out earlier on you know that radio is, is such a wonderful medium because it places so much of the creation into the listener's head um so in some ways you know voice hatching in this respect you're you're creating something of a blank slate as well that the listener can can apply their own imagination to um and obviously blank is the wrong word but certainly a malleable um image that they can use in their own head and that works so well for horror in radio yes. we call it active listening where people are creating the the images themselves and i think a lot of times when you have you know the 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 darkness of the visuals on this and you're trying to see what's ahead and what's coming in that little glimmer of light people create in their own imaginations what that is, whether it's horrible or whether it's help. And that's what leads to great horror because uh, you're, you become totally invested in it. Yeah, I mean, it's the Hitchcock rule of filmmaking, right? I mean, what's, what's more terrifying is not what you see, but what you can't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mine, so we're kind of, this is kind of changing gears a little, but um, so it, you can, we kind of touched on this before, the interview truly began, but I've, it seems like many people have indeed reached out to you in the past. Um, and it seems like your work they, in Amnesia has gotten you guys pretty popular, at least during the early 2010s. So how has Amnesia in, impacted your guys' careers? Um, I've, you know, gotten nothing but, but good from Amnesia and was kind of surprised because like with Richard, we... You know, we tend to do these things and then move on. You know, there's another game the following week, commercial of day after that. It just, it just kind of rolls along, and you don't really kind of dwell on. And I'm like, I'm always waiting until it shows up in IMDb when people are like, "So, what have you done?" And it's like, ah, I think it's like I was a ghost. I can't, um, you know, I just didn't quite remember who was a, you know, um, but um, with this, I was telling you earlier. I think I told you the story of I got a Facebook request from a young lady. She was in her early teens, and she said, you know, I live in Iceland, and I'm a huge fan of the game Amnesia the Dark Descent, and I just think you're amazing. And I was wondering if we could be Facebook friends, and, and I could share some of my, you know, uh, Amnesia fan art. And I'm kind of like, yeah, sure, sounds like fun. And she sent me these pictures, and it's like pictures titled, This is my brain influenced by Alexander uh, while playing The Dark Descent. And I was just like, I thought it was just fascinating that, you know, she was so into the game. And then I went to find out, you know, I saw on Facebook where she was, and she lives on an island. And I looked it up on Google Maps, and it just drops you down right in the middle of town. And it just kind of looked like Port Wen from Doc Martin. You know, a little fishing village. I was kind of like, oh, isn't that charming? And then I zoomed out to see how far away from land I and kept zooming and zooming and zooming. And it just became this little teeny dot. And it's like hundreds of miles wow. from the coast. And I just got panicked that this poor little girl was stuck in the middle of the North Sea uh, <laughs> playing Amnesia the Dark Descent. And where are her parents? And she really shouldn't be doing this. 
that's beautiful. Amazing how well adjusted she was for that going on. But I was just the parent in me came out, and I was just oh. like, I asked my son, "Have you ever played this game?" And he's kind of like, "Yeah, Dad." And I said, "You didn't, you you didn't tell you when you were a teenager." I says, "Dad, I'm 35, so I was 25 when I started." Like, oh, okay. Um, you can pick your own games when you're 25. Yes. I mean, us fans are from all over, like, all over America, all over the world. All over the world, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then I've, I've got, you know, I've gotten dozens of other Facebook requests from people. And I mean, and I don't put that much stuff on Facebook, so I'm always more than happy to, you know, connect because you'll just hear rantings against the current administration and um, things that I'm up to. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but it, it the you know the the fans have been great about it and are um, very respectful and just the the joy they have uh, in the game. I mean that's what was so nice to hear from you guys. Uh, I just really think that's uh, our our work is very temporary and very temporal, and we just kind of drop in and do the best we can and move on. And every once in a while, it's nice to know that we made a mark. And that it uh, touched people, because that's uh, as a performer, that's what you want to do. You want to connect with people. So uh, even through this format, it's nice to make that connection. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Yeah, I, I absolutely echo everything Sam said. Um, you know, I feel very privileged to have been part of something that had such a cultural impact. Um, and video games by their very nature are disposable you know you play call of duty 4 and then a year later you throw it out and play call of duty 5 the world moves on um but this one really really did seem to impact a lot a lot of people and it, it impacted people that i think aren't traditional gamers as well um i have to say from from my personal perspective moving into teaching um this game has been uh, one of the most beneficial things to me building relationships with students because every year when I open my door in September which I won't be doing this September obviously um, there's always a gaggle of kids that come in and they're like you're Daniel from Amnesia and they literally cannot believe it um, and you know getting that amount of kudos from from your students on day one I mean that's half the battle so it's actually made my teaching career a, a lot easier um, what, what really surprised me actually when the game came out was uh, it really brought home to me what a massive digital footprint I have. Um, I mean, no bigger than anyone else, but um, people, fans managed to track me down on, I had a YouTube channel that I used exclusively for posting videos of our kids to my parents back in England. I was just a little, I'd post, you know, crappy little videos of the kids playing in the garden or whatever um and people found that on youtube and i was like wow this is weird um oh, your kid's named alexander yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i you know it, it's been it's been wonderful being part of such a cultural phenomena and it's it's been very personally beneficial to me mm -hmm. all right one well, yes I remember I was around 11 or 12 years old when I found out about Amnesia. It was probably a year or two after it had come out. And I was so fascinated by it because I, I wasn't a gamer myself back then. You know, I was more into books and stuff like that. So when I first saw this, I was so mesmerized by the story and by the visuals that I kind of became obsessed with it. I mean, a lot of us did. And it's kind of really taken a really, it's kind of, ah, how do I word this? It's taken a really special place in all of our hearts because I honestly have never seen anything like it before. And I still haven't really seen anything quite as amazing as it, so. Yeah. Yeah, and and it attracts a, a certain kind of gamer. Like I said, I, I, I find someone who's really into amnesia a lot more interesting than someone who's really into Call of Duty. Well, then, I think I'll take that as a compliment. Yes. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah. Um, would you, since um, have, uh, I know, Richard, you played some of Amnesia. Um, would either of you ever play, actually sit down and play Amnesia? And if you have, would you do it again in honor of the 10th anniversary someday? <laughs> I was thinking that I might actually give it a try in honor of its 10th anniversary. I'm not much of a game player, and uh, what I 
usually do is uh, my son is quite a gamer. And so, uh, uh, in fact, I, I love it. He's always, I get text messages, Dad, were you a voice in City of Heroes? I'm like, yeah. He says, I, I thought so. Your voice just kind of came up. I was in the other room. My friends are playing. I said, hey, that's my dad. Uh, and then it's like, oh, on Dota 2, I only play characters you voice, Dad. It's just kind of, you know. Um, it's little, he gets little to play a lot of characters then, Sam, because yeah, you're, yeah. you're a very <laughs> prolific artist. Yeah, but it's... Uh, uh, it's great fun, and it's been great fun for him because a lot of times I'll be working on a game, and they're kind of like, "Oh, well, let us know. We'll we'll send him a, 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 a I forget what they call it, but a basically a screener type thing that lets him play in early to help with the gameplay." So Aww. he always enjoyed that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a it's it's I I think that I might actually have to do that because. Uh, this is this is uh, kind of a uh, a a special thing. We rarely rarely hear back from from people about the t anniversary of anything, um, unless they don't pay you, in which case you're just counting the days. But that would be amazing. Uh, we paid right on time. We really enjoy that. The, the most important thing of any video game yeah. is when the check clears. Yeah. Well, if you do decide to stream it, we'll all be watching. Oh, yeah. we'll, keep, we'll, we'll, cheer you, we'll cheer you on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I do remember when I did, uh, so when it first came out, and like I said, it all went off, and I was like, I can't even remember this. Well, let's, let's revisit this. So I downloaded the free um, kind of uh, limited version of the game that you could get at that point onto my PC. And... Um, massively disturbed by everything that I saw. Uh, and like I said, I wasn't particularly good at it either. That was the other thing. Uh, I, I managed to kill Daniel in more ways than I could possibly imagine. <laughs> it tends to happen. Yes. Um, yeah, you, Richard, you need to watch a clip of the uh, paint the man, cut the lions scene, because that's one of your best, in my opinion, that's one of your best scenes. Paint the man and cut the lions. Yes. And Daniel descends into madness, basically. That's right. Right on the edge of complete lunacy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's so... That was such... That, that scene really made me uncomfortable. And I'm a big fan of Daniel, and I'm like, man, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dan, Daniel had a rough ride. Yes, he did. Whether he deserved it or not is up to the fans. Precisely. That's the blank slate I was talking about. Yes. You know, honestly, I think when you play it the first time around, you tend to sympathize more with Daniel, like, oh, this poor guy got manipulated by Alexander. You know, we should feel sorry for him. But at the end of the day, he did make the decisions that he made. So mm -hmm. you kind of come to realize no one here is perfect. No one's a saint. And that's mm -hmm. what makes him a very likable character because he's human. And right. same with and Alexander. It, and, right, and it, it's, it's Greek tragedy. You are the victim of your own flaws. You know, that's that's the essence of tragedy, that it's, it is yourself that brings you down. Yeah. I'll try to keep that in mind. Okay, um, I think this next question might be a little redundant because we already talked about um, your guys' interest in video games, so we can okay. skip over that. Um, so what did you think of the fan reaction initially when it first happened, when it first kind of exploded? How did, what was your initial kind of feeling and reaction and how did you take it? Um, well, obviously uh, a great sense of pride of having had the opportunity to work in something that seemed to be having a big impact on people's lives. Um, and a little bit of incredulity as well, to be honest. Um, I, I was very surprised that it, it got as big as it did. Um, and, and I'm still surprised, you know, I, I was surprised when you reached out to me uh, on email 10 years later that the, here's something that I was lucky enough to have a part in that's still a big important part of people's lives. Um, and that's, that's very humbling and it's a great honor. Mm. Okay, um, well, oh, the, do we want to give Sam a chance? <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Okay. No, I I agree a hundred percent. I uh, I had no idea that it was even possible. Uh, they, had, you know, I I'm, 
my son talked about games that he loved and and such and uh you know uh i remember him showing me uh one of his favorite um a guy who does a demo of the game and you watch him play and he does a running commentary uh of the show and he's he's playing along and alexander comes on and he says ah, that sounds like sam a maori he is one of my favorite voice actors this is going to be great and, <laughs> and it was just kind of like an insight into the the world of gaming that i didn't know about mm-hmm. and then all of the like i said being reached out to from around the world from people who had had i mean i'm i'm a voice actor i want people to be able to find me and hire me so um you know i kind of ex- expected i'm not i'm not hiding on the on the web um but uh uh yeah I, this 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 game has had the most uh far reaching and longest lasting interest of any game that i've ever done um you know probably outside of Dota 2 which was uh was the funnest thing i did on that is they took they took us up to seattle uh me and eric newsom and uh, a couple other people and we they had the the big tournament at the end of the year and they they had us set up a table and they gave us pictures of our characters and we signed the pictures and talked to the fans and it was another one of those uh moments where Someone came up and said, "So, what do you think about, you know, the the whole thing about the uh, the difference between your characters?" And I'm just going to, I have no idea what they're talking about. And afterwards, I go and look online, and there's this whole thing where somebody's like, "Sam A. Maori's voices just all sound the same. He needs to be <laughs> reworked. They need." And I'm just kind of like, "Oh my god!" And I had no idea, and I'm just smiling away at them, kind of like, "Well, you know." I'm I'm just glad people like the game. Uh, <laughs> didn't realize I was being trolled uh, in real life. Oof. And of course, I will point out that the person who was trolling me in the same thing he was talking about. Now the best guy he does this character and this character. His name is Keith. It's something with a K. And I'm kind of like, no, the person you want to praise, he cannot remember the name. But me, Sam A. Maori. When you Google Sam A. Maori and Dota Two. His complaints about it are one of the first things that pop up. I'm just kind of like, thank you for remembering my name. That's very funny. Uh, <laughs> couldn't that be that that S guy from Portland? Wouldn't that you know work just as well? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a rather sad indictment on the world we live in that um, if you if you get any kind of public profile in any way whatsoever, people are going to troll you. Yeah. Um, so it happens. You know, I mean, I'm sure Richard's done stage work as well. I'm, you know, I've done most of my career before I got into doing uh, video games was on stage. And there is nothing more punishing than a audience that is not buying what you're doing in real life. Um, So a few trolls on the internet we can deal with. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Um, um, Let's see how we are doing on time. All right. Um, I think um, since we have plans for the thank you letters, um, which we provided as part of the script, I think um, we should. It would be best if we went on to the final question, if that is all right by you, Laura. Um. Sure. All right. Um. Just want to get approval. Um. Is there anything you would like to say to the fans who are here today? And the fans who are going to be watching this. Yeah. Richard, uh, I'm just I'm just going to say a massive thank you. I mean, the 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 love and support and positivity that that this has generated in my life has been has been phenomenal. Um, y- you guys are are true fans in the sense that you're you're in for the long haul, right? I mean, this is this is not some passing fad for you. This is something that's had a, a genuine impact on your life, um, and it it has been an almost overwhelmingly positive experience for me. So I want to say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you for buying the game. Thank you for playing the game, and thank you for loving the game. Mm-hmm. I agree a hundred percent. You couldn't pick a better group of of fans and just people. And every time, every like I said, every interaction I have with uh, you is almost a overwhelmingly positive. Um, 
you know the 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 joy that you all have in the game and the is just uh uh so f meaningful for us who don't usually get uh to see how our work in games uh affects people and not only you know i mean it's it's a creepy game and it's <laughs> dark but um you know the fans are not and uh, i appreciate that from all of you and uh and I just, I couldn't be more grateful for you guys and Frictional and uh, Mark and Lonnie and Richard and, you know, a great group of people to work with and uh, that that the work remains 10 years later and has so many cool, interesting people interested in it is a, a testament to it. And um, I, I can't thank everybody enough for letting me play. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, that was amazing. You so much. Oh. Right. Kind of dying inside, but it's okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so, so now we have these two thank you letters. Um, Richard will read his first, and then Mallory, you shall read yours. Thank you. I hope oh. it wasn't too crazy. Yeah, I know we're kind of putting you on the spot since you know you have to do the voices and all that, but are yeah. we doing this in character? Are we? Yes. Yeah, if you if you don't mind. If you don't mind. We thought it All would right. be pretty cool. We we actually modeled the letters after the dialogue and Daniel's letter to self, the very right. first note that you pick up in the game. Yeah. Okay. Well, th this is how you get to witness how terrible I am without Mark. So. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We'll, under we'll understand. All righty. So I have the script here. Mm -hmm. uh, with my birthday very beautifully printed on the top so oh um i do have one question when they chose the date for the letter to self was it because of your birthday or was it just totally coincidental absolutely pure coincidence yes i'm oh, pretty wow. sure they had no idea or interest of when my birthday was <laughs> so <laughs> yes it was just one of those weird um mobius strip moments in life that's crazy yes yeah. Here's a song. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, you ready? Okay. 19th of August, 2020. Dear Frictional Games, I wish I could ask you how much you remember. It's been so long since my voice brought Daniel to life. <laughs> Don't be afraid, Frictional. I can't tell you why, but know this. Ten years have passed since Amnesia the Dark Descent emerged and changed the world of horror for the better. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. Your effort has brought about incredible things. God willing, the name Amnesia still evokes pride in you. If not, this will sound predictable. You have made one of the greatest survival horror games for the ages. Others have been no match for you. Their content is old and unoriginal and yours fresh and terrifying. One last thing. We offer many thanks with an incredible admiration following you. It is an unstoppable force changing our reality. Some have tried everything, but there is no way to break this community. You need to know that we will always support you as long as we can. Thank you all, Frictional. Ascend into the light where greatness awaits and keeps making these amazing games. Your humble creation, Daniel. Yes. Kindness, I'm witnessing Daniel. <laughs> oh, wow. Impressed. Quite frankly, I'm not sure what to tell you. I hold no grudge against you or my creators, Frictional Games. Frictional, we are so very much the same, you and I. We both are masters of fear, albeit for different reasons. Did you really change the gaming franchise? It does explain the incredible shift in the gaming world. You did finish what you set out to do. You talked about bankruptcy, and yet clung on to that final chance. You faced the industry's wrath and saved your company and me. You had been granted a chance to redeem the stale industry, to make it terrifying again. <laughs> it pleases me to see you filled with such determination. I hope you of all people can appreciate this achievement. Do you see it, Frictional Games? 
a whole fandom cheering for you, truly immaculate. Thank you, Frictional Games. Your game will not be forgotten. You will be celebrated forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Nice one, Sam. Yes. Classic Maori. <laughs> uh, uh, a Maori moment. <laughs> My well, bad for the little interruption in the beginning. <laughs> it's all good. We're so sorry. One time I was working on a scary game like this, and the engineer said, can somebody come out here and sit with me while he's talking? Um. Oh. <laughs> well, um, so that was, that was the actual interview itself. Now, for depending on how well you guys are doing on time, we will um, have, we'll unmute people, and people will get to have a little bit of time to have fan questions, saying hello, thank you. And all that good stuff. Um, Got some more, yeah. It'll take about like 10, 15 minutes at most. Yeah. If that's okay we'll, with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Okay. All right. Um, all right. How do we go about doing this? Um, hmm. Should we ask people if they have questions or should we just start a meeting? I, I just. Mm. Shinny wants to ask a question, so. Go ahead. Yeah, well, he, go ahead as, ahead. as a Zoom power user, um, if people pull up the list of participants, uh, if they want to speak, then there's a little raise hand button. And if they ah. click on that, it'll appear next to their name, and then you can ask them to ask their question. Um, I'm not sure if I have that feature enabled. I may or may not have disabled it, but if people want to ask questions, they can say it in the little chat box. Mm -hmm. And I can always ask people to unmute as well. Yeah. So it's enabled, so ye. Okay. Shall we go ahead and unmute? Here we go. This is ready. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, what got you both into voice acting? Well, I started out as a stage actor and um, uh, kind of stayed away from the commercial aspect of uh, doing voiceover work. Uh, for years, uh, I did a couple of commercials. People would see me in a play and say, oh, can you come by and do this? And it was fun. But um, it wasn't until the, you know, 90s that I really kind of got into the the voiceover side of things. And then video games came along and it was kind of perfect for stage actors who had done a lot of Shakespeare and uh, big language based things with heightened emotions and uh, kind of fit right into games and so it worked out really well for me and then I met Lonnie and Mark and they both were in on the production end of things and uh, once you make a connection with someone like that then you get the auditions and and so yeah so that's how I kind of got into it uh, yeah for me so I, I moved from the UK uh, in 2001 uh, and I'd been working for the last four years in the UK as a television host um, on um, rather dull computer shows, to be honest, but there you go. Um, uh, so we moved to Portland and there, there's no television that comes out of Portland, uh, but I wanted to stay in the business. So um, I found an advert for a voiceover workshop uh, run by Mark and Linda Bard, uh, who are uh, two uh, sound engineers. They've got their own sound production company in Portland. So I started going to these workshops on a Thursday night, um, practicing reading scripts and commercials and that kind of stuff. Um, and they liked my work. So they hooked me up with an agent in town and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> ah. ah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, we got a few more questions. Um, who shall oh, yeah. go? You can go next. Julia? I can't hear your name. The... Julia, hello. Can you hear oh. us? There you are, friend. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, can, can I just quickly introduce myself? My, my name is Julia. I uh, just, hi. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. It literally made me cry. You reading those letters made me cry. Aww. Me too. Aww. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if it's overwhelming. It's, uh, Oh my god, I just never thought I would meet you guys, because 
um, your work in Amnesia was the thing that inspired me the most because I was, I'm, I'm an artist and I'm pretty much an, an, an aspiring animator and Amnesia was like the most inspiring thing for me. So just, I'm so glad I could meet you, I could talk to you guys. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah, glad to have you here. Yes. And um, have you creating That's, uh, the next generation of uh, um, developers? Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yes. Cool. cool. <laughs> Europe. Yeah. yeah. Remember us when oh, you're. Oh boy. Ooh. I will. I will. Hello. I will. Welcome. My name is Cold, technically. And uh, I'm a little Slav goat from Romania. I usually lurk in the more fandom shippy parts of Amnesia, but I love the games. I played all of them, almost religiously. I need to replay them. But my question is, are you too aware of the amount of uh, ships that happen with your characters? For example, a very popular one is Daniel with Alexander, but my most favorite is Daniel and his lantern. <laughs> oh, dear. oh no! Or Alexander and his castle, which that was a big surprise for me. Or Daniel and Mayfair. The entirety of Mayfair. Are we talking Not about someone? Um... Uh, things in the game or, or what this has spawned outside of the game? Kind of outside of the game. Spawn. I, so. I am not aware of those. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but I'm certainly going to be Googling it when we're done. Right. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Daniel and his lantern. No. Okay, I'm going to look it up right now. Oh, no, no, no. no. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> or should I not be doing this right now? <laughs> Maybe don't share your. About I think it would be in your best interest not to do that. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think, I mean, there's good, good reading material out there, and everything is done in uh, good humor. Yeah. But it's it's all about how much does one want to know how their character is uh, well used. <laughs> Because I don't know what word to use otherwise. I think we uh, we have we have little enough that we can control in the actual game. The things outside of the game we have no no control over, and and as you've seen for ten years, we've been blissfully ignorant. <laughs> and until now, you've ripped the. Book. So, I, yeah, <laughs> we've ruined it. <laughs> I mean, I just ship Daniel with a warm, cozy fire and no monsters, <laughs> and that's it. In, in a happy I retirement. That sometimes. A retirement. <laughs> um, so who are we? Who's um going next? We've got Bryce. Um, who wishes to go next or say hello? Well. You know, I just want to say again, like, thank you so much for taking the time out to be here, um, you know, with everyone. Uh, we have a lot of content creators in here. Um, I know, like, myself and Zara, we've also cosplayed as Daniel, which is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, and I just, you know, thank you so much for inspiring us to create these costumes, art, fan fiction, and everything. Um, I, I love the game, and I love you guys' works so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for everything. I, I've actually done a few videos um, in my Daniel Cosmo. I've actually lip saying voice lines from the game. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's one of the great things about being involved in a project like this is, and Sam alluded to this earlier on, um, is that it, it spawns creativity in other people. And mm -hmm. if, if we've kicked that can down the road a bit and, and someone else is, is making the can bigger and better and kicking it with more gusto, then that's, that's fantastic news. Who mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. So um, Bryce, you're up next. Um, okay, uh, let me... I'm going to, okay, so I just wanted to say that you guys are like such an inspiration to me <laughs> because uh, I, I had this, I used to want to voice act and uh, 
I, even though I don't have that dream anymore, it's so compelling to see such professional voice actors uh, <clears throat> and see that you guys have made such a success of yourselves. And it, it's really such an inspiration to me. Thank well, you. Very much. you know, uh, what one person can do, any other person can do. So yeah. if that's the way you want to go, go for it. Yeah. And the question that I wanted to ask was, okay, uh, I felt a little embarrassed to asking this question after what the people have asked already. <laughs> I'm not, I think I'm, I'm in the clear. But uh, we know that there's a sequel, uh, the sequel Rebirth coming, but did you guys ever hear about the sequel known as A Machine for Pigs? And if so, did you guys ever read about it or anything? Because Alexander was mentioned once in it. Mm. So I was just curious. Sadly, that I've, I've never heard anything employment-wise after. Um, uh, but the other, the other odd thing is, it's even with this, the the latest one they're going to roll out. Part of me is kind of like, Richard could get a call tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could That's happen. That's true. In, I've I've done games, and then literally three days later, the games dropped. So, um, you know, it's 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 the nature of the this business is it's very. The, the voices are almost always the last thing to go in. And uh, yeah. uh, and I've done last minute changes or new characters or things. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that's why we're just always ready, you know. Okay, yeah. well, thank you. You bet, thank you. All right, so uh, Raptor's turn. Hello again. <laughs> hey, Miles. Um, first off, I wanna say, uh, this, is, this is actually directed towards the hosts of this interview. Um, I wanted to ask, were you guys inspired to do the second interview after the one that I hosted with some other people in the past? I think it was Mudville, uh, I think. Mr. Topping. You, you'll remember which, which we Dude. did we do the last one. We I did forgot. it in my classroom, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lied to my mom and said I was staying for tutoring and I was actually <gasps> doing it. Really? So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so were you guys inspired by that interview to do this one, or was this always planned before that existence of the other one? Well, Me? Um, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, sorry. All no. right, well, <laughs> sorry. Um, you, sorry, so it started because I feel like we were almost joking about it many, many, like several months ago when we were planning out another project for Amnesia, and I recalled people talking about it. It would be kind of cool if we could do an interview with um Mar uh, with Richard and eventually Maori even because why not and I after we got part of that project done I decided was were they joking or should I actually we actually try that and so I decided originally to try to contact um the both of you but I decided that it would be best to enlist help and that's when Laura came to the rescue and really helped pull through. And we've been working on this project really for several weeks now. And yeah. it's been a long process, but we finally are at the day where we can, you know, do it. Still have to edit, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, for well, me personally, I remember, oh, um, sorry. Oh, sorry. For me personally, oh. um, I hadn't seen the Mudbill interview before, you know, this whole idea came about. And when Anya linked us to it, I watched it and I thought, wow, this is great. What if we did something like this? But instead of just interviewing Mr. Topping, we also interview Mr. Maori in the, at the same time and kind of add our own little twist to it, like the letters and the fan mm -hmm. um, interaction. So, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's actually pretty lucky that I was able to be here because um, it was like, remember someone here invited me to I joined the frictional games discord again because I wanted to see if there was like any more after the interview and it by chance someone dm me like hey which aren't you a student why don't you come to the next interview and I was like oh cool this yeah, is just, awesome like, just same and dip one, even if I'm not the main focus I was afraid so, I wasn't gonna be able to find you actually because yeah. <laughs> me you had left the server and I'm like well shoot but there you are. You just happened to say something, and I'm like, "Oh, that's that's Raptor Trash." Let me get. <laughs> and well, okay. I'm very glad that you managed to catch me in the server then, because this is yeah. honestly 
really great. And it was very nice saying hi to Mr. Topping again because we haven't talked for like the entire school year because I don't have his class anymore. So it was very yeah. nice saying hi to him and saying hi to everyone here. So, yeah, yeah that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I believe, Herring, I think you're next. Well, uh, hello, hello from Ukraine. Um, I'm a writer m myself, and uh, after after I played Amnesia, it uh, was influenced me so that uh, uh, I began working in a horror genre. And for me, in writing, the most important part is the characters. And uh, when I write my characters, uh, when uh, suddenly I realized that uh, for some of them, I hear in my head uh, your voices, and. I think it's very important, and I'm I'm really happy to be here and hearing you now. Th thank you for your, everything. Your your work was very influenced at me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hello. Lara. And best of luck with your writing. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right, uh, Techie. Let me make sure. There you go. My internet's kind of acting up, sorry. Go right. um, well, um, I, I mostly um, do like art stuff, but I've also done voice acting in the past. Um, in fact, I actually, I have a, I did a voice for an RPG game called um, Pathfinder Kingmaker. Mm -hmm. And I'll, although I haven't done voice acting in a while, I was curious if y'all had any like advice for like any young aspiring voice actors, like uh, how to like get into the industry or anything like that. Sam, do you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's like anything else. It's a it's it's a fairly tough road to hoe, and um, there are uh, many paths to uh, uh, building a career. Uh, but when you're starting out, uh, anytime you can get involved in any classes, uh, I think improv classes are a great thing to take because that uh, ability to think fast and uh, and work with other people that improv uh, uh, foments is a, a, a great tool for games. Um, if you get the uh, opportunity to audition for stage work, again, a good thing because when you do stage work, you have to learn how to support your voice and, uh, and that will help you as, you as you try to develop other things. Um, they're harder to come across, but uh, any kind of mic technique or you know how to use uh, a microphone to different effects, and how to uh, use the recording software. Uh, I mean, the beautiful thing about it these days is, when I started, uh, you weren't allowed to touch anything in the recording booth. You know, you walk; they didn't want you to touch the music stand. I'll adjust that. Um, you know, and it cost half a million dollars to set up a recording booth for doing professional voiceovers. Um, I spent probably. $10,000 on my studio, home studio, but these days I could probably do it for two. And you can do completely broadcast ready uh, recordings for a couple hundred dollars uh, if you can find a nice quiet space to treat. Um, and uh, I think probably the, the best advice would be to get yourself a home recording setup and practice every day. Uh, just, just record stuff, record commercials, record bits from your favorite games, um, you know, and don't just try to mimic other people's stuff, but, you know, uh, use your imagination to try to create uh, new voices, um, even if they're from characters you know are successful and you love, go ahead and try them another way and see how that goes. Because that's uh, your your imagination, your determination, and your desire to uh, to stick with it is what's going to make it for you. But yeah. practice every day. Practice every day. That's like anything. The ten thousand hours is what you need. Yeah, and luckily my dad does music, and so he actually has like recording equipment at home. So I usually just use his stuff. That is a good way to go. But make sure you know how to use it. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I would absolutely echo that. And, and I would add to that, um, be really comfortable listening to your own voice as well. Oh, um, yeah. You know, there's no point just recording a whole bunch of stuff. You, you need to work out 
what changing the shape of your neck does, the way you position yourself, the way you breathe, uh, mm -hmm. and then listening to that back over and over again so that you, you can learn to control the nuances of your own voice. Because when you get into a booth and the, the sound engineer says, you know, I, I need it more heartfelt, then you need to understand what you need to do physically to make that happen. Um, and that's muscle memory, it's auditory memory. Um, so yeah, you've just got to become really comfortable with listening to your own voice over and over and over again. Right. <laughs> We're developing critical, critical listening skills. Yeah. What you like, what's good, what works, what doesn't work. And, and be hard on the person you're listening to, like you'd be hard when you're listening to yourself. Uh, because that's, when you get into this business, you're going to, you know, like we're, we're talking about 20 minute sessions, and they don't have time to hold your hand or try to teach you how to do your job. And the number of times that I've had, I mean, I've been in sessions where actors have stormed out of the booth, because the direction was so rough. Mm. It's always kind of like, Again, theater comes in really handy. Uh, in real life, somebody being mean to you in a sound booth really is not. Yes. Yeah, when you get feedback, um, yeah, could you do that again? That was great, but do it again, but just not so bloody awful. Yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, you didn't get anywhere close to what I asked for. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah, are you the guy we ordered? <laughs> No. Is Mark Rose working today? Is he home? <laughs> oh. Need to make a phone call, Sam. Just wait a second. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, Vincent Smith, the other the other Vincent, you're up. Maybe. Oop. Or not. No. Oh, no. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just a little nervous. I'm I'm overstimulated, so I'm kind of stimming right now. Um, <laughs> um, I've written something so I would not ramble. Um, my name is Vincent, of course. I draw so much fan art, it's insane. And thanks for being such an influential part of my voice acting, since I also wanted to voice characters since I was 13, and I've imitated them since. Of course, Gary Chalk has been a huge influence since um, gaining a huge special interest in Transformers when Amnesia came to the U.S. Not Amnesia, Armada, excuse me. Am Amnesia's on the brain, but <clears throat> they got me into more uh, voicing things such as dramas, and I'm not sure if I would do it as a career, but it would be a sweet bonus. And imitating voices was a huge hobby of mine. And I thank you so much for being so influential regardless and for being a part of something I can indulge in into after a healing period of nothing but drama for an entire year that was 2011. I couldn't stop playing the game since I've gotten into it for my first 21st, for my 21st birthday. For, and I streamed it for eight and a half hours to finish the game for the first time and played it many, many times after that and created what I could. Thank you so much for giving me inspiration and for being a part of the game that became a huge special interest of mine. Well, thank you. We're glad we could be a part. Yeah, thank you, Vincent. And uh, glad to have been able to have been some kind of positive influence on you when things weren't going so well. That yeah. means a lot to me. Do we have anyone else coming up with questions? Um, yeah. Any, anything? It's like Luster Bun would be up for saying hi. Hi, Luster. Oh. Hi, Luster. Oh, wait, I think we have to ask them to unmute. Oh. Guys, a question, if you don't mind. Um, hello? Yes. Hello. You're all good. Uh, okay, uh, and I am aware uh, you can not answer answer this question but um it's a little silly but i heard you richard sing in one commercial you sang rule britannia and i really really liked it <laughs> and then the got deleted can you sing that again for a few seconds please <laughs> oh yes that was for a uh, oh gosh i was i was a butler 
um, higher, oh, it was the Montana State yeah. Lottery. That's right, I remember now. Um, as shot by Jason Satterland, I seem to remember. Um, yes, it was uh, Michael, blow everybody's ear out. Mm -hmm. oh, in Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. La 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 la. Yeah, that was it. That, that's good. Uh, Goodish. Well, I, I think um, Sam would blow me out of the ballpark, but there you go. <laughs> that's all right. That's so good. I imagine that, I mean, I'm not forcing anyone, anyone to do anything. It's just that I imagine that, you know, as voice actors, you have to be trained in singing. And. It just, you know, it would, it's so, so cool. And well, being able to sing is a, is a great bonus. I, I'm not a good singer, so that's, I, I miss out on a few gigs because of that. Um, Sam, do you sing? I've never asked you Richard that. and I are in the same boat, which is uh, willing to sing. <laughs> but not a proponent. No, but that's not the first thing on my, uh, my arsenal. But, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That was amazing. Good one, Julia. Yay! <laughs> yes. Um, um, okay, let me uh, get cold back up in here. All these things to Google when we're done here. I know, right? I'm going to find so much out about myself. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, first of all, I've been extremely rude. And I forgot to thank uh, both of you for the work you had done for this game, which has been a game that uh, made me get into more complex multiplayer games and find a lot of my friends that are with me at the moment in this interview. Mm -hmm. And I can thank, uh, I, I don't have words to thank enough for uh, yeah. doing the works that you two did. Okay. And my question would be in the extensive career as voice actors have you had any like uh, memories that uh, you'll that will not haunt you for life but you'll never forget like a funny anecdote or uh, something among uh, along those lines i i can't find my english words can't you <laughs> Oh gosh, I, I've had a couple of sessions where, uh, and again, we come. I know this is going to come back to Mark again, um, but but if you're working with someone who's really unclear what they want, but they know they're not liking what they hear, it can get very frustrating because they want you to redo it again and again and again, but they don't really know how they want it to be different, and so then then you start kind of veering off the path and getting wilder and wackier and crazier and and that's not what they want either that can be very frustrating especially uh in today's world where a lot of these sessions are almost all of these sessions to be honest are done remotely so you've got somebody's voice in your ear from la mm -hmm. telling you that it's good but it's not what they want and yes that can be a little bit annoying yeah <laughs> i think probably the Funniest thing that ever happened to me on a session was um, I, I got a call saying, remember you did this work for us on this game and uh, we're, we're going to be doing a reboot of it and we'd love to have you back to record it again. And I'm like, gee, that's great. You know, it was like five years ago. I don't even remember what it was. And, and um, uh, so we're at the session and I say, do you have a, a, a sample? And they play a sample of my friend Bruce Miles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, you know, that's not me, right? Uh, I can do Bruce, I can do that, but um, if you want Bruce, <laughs> have his number. Uh, <laughs> oh no, 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 we want you, we want you. I'm just gonna like, okay. Um, and and they've done that to me twice. Every time they call back, it's just like, oh, and here's the sample. I'm kind of like, that's still Bruce. Um, oh god oh, yeah they called bruce and said you waiting for a call they should be calling you Oof. just Sorry. just take the first audio file and send it to him it's exactly. surely that it's one so easy to do but no um but that that was an embarrassing moment and uh uh then another time i i was uh auditioning for something and i said oh here's the sample they're looking for and it was me was oh. 
was the sample. <laughs> so my agent was kind of like, can't you just tell them they already have me? Um, <laughs> we're good to go. Um, oh, wow. But that's the nature of it. I, uh, I had a, a friend here in town. Um, uh, oh, God, what's his name? Sam. Um, the, the Marlboro man, the, you know, beef, it's what's for dinner. It's on uh, Sam. Uh, oh, name escapes me. Is in the Big Lebowski. But anyway, he's a, uh -huh. Sam Elliott. Yeah, Sam Elliott. Yeah. He has family here in Oregon. And so whenever he had a big job, he would go to Sonic Media to, you know, record the job before going back and hanging out with his dad. And um, uh, the engineer told me one time while they were waiting for the L.A. people, he said, said, yeah, my agent one time, because everyone always says we were looking for Sam Elliott type voice. And he said, send me one of those. So they sent it to him, and he did the audition and sent it in, and did not get cast. <laughs> oh, God. oh no! Oh, no. That's that, that's an insight into the voiceover world. Um, wow. You... Okay, that's <laughs> oof. Um, so Lus Luster, you're up next, and then Julia. Hmm. Uh, but I, I don't think Sorry, I got poor lighting. I wasn't actually expecting to come on screen, but hi, my name's Karen. I'm originally from Canada, and I'm just really curious. What are you guys up to, to these days? Everything's kind of falling apart, and I'm curious how you guys are keeping busy. I am, um, you know, continue to audition for things. I have my, uh, uh, we're trying to work out things with the Lamet Radio Workshop to be able to do some sort of live Zoom performances. Uh, I just met with a couple of writers last night, and we're going to be working on some more uh, radio drama things, which plays out pretty well in the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> so we're doing that. Otherwise, trying to keep healthy. I'm in a lot of the uh, top categories of risk for COVID, so uh, we try to stay very uh, uh, isolated out here. And uh, luckily, my wife is a, a school teacher in the same district as Richard in North Clackamas. Uh, she teaches at Linwood Elementary. And um, oh, so cool. we, um, uh, uh, we're, you know, trying to keep our spirits up and keep everybody safe. And uh, it's one of the things I like about this. It's nice to reach out and know that people are out there and that we're, we're, we've all got each other's backs. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You yeah. uh, well, I, I'm trying to work out how to, uh, how to teach people chemistry over Zoom. So that's pretty <laughs> much where I'm at these days. Mm -hmm. um, and then read the damn wall behind you. It's yeah, right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. I'll just leave the camera on and walk <laughs> off, and hopefully it'll just seep into their brains by osmosis. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was quite a challenge. Uh, we, we packed up our school at the beginning of March when COVID hit um, and frantically scrambled to try and port our entire teaching to an online platform yeah. um, with mixed success. Um, so I've actually been working quite a lot over the summer getting ready for the fall. I, I was fairly confident, uh, even when school ended uh, in June, that we wouldn't be coming back in September, despite what everybody said. Mm -hmm. And so I, I started making plans straight away for porting my curriculum to an online environment. Um, so our kids start on September the 8th. So I'm still beavering away, trying to get everything lined up. Uh, on a personal level, uh, both of my adult uh, children who live in America have had to move home because oh. they're both, they're, you know, my youngest daughter just graduated college and my son, uh, his job is now remote and he didn't want to be spending 2000 a month on his apartment in LA. Yeah. So they've both moved back with us, which is lovely. So it's really nice having those guys in the house um, and enjoying a new puppy that we got. So yeah, that's my life oh, right now. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I was, I was really curious about you guys were up to these days. Yeah. Well, Bye. Keeping busy. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> September, <laughs> September the eighth actually happens to be the day of Amnesia's anniversary. So, wow. so or if I was into numerology, Very meta. I'd be seeing all kinds of weird connections here. Uh -huh. um, zero. Coming down on you, Richard. This is um, yeah, right. <laughs> the nexus is upon us. Yes. <laughs> I've created a time paradox. The universe is going to implode. <laughs> Possible geometry. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. um, I have to leave for work now, but I just want to say thank you so much for you guys coming in for this. This is just like the most amazing thing. And thank you so much for like your hard work in the game and inspiring me to make, you know, fan art, cosplay, all that kind of stuff and influencing me for all these past decade. It's, it's been amazing. Thank you very much. And thank mm -hmm. Anya and Laura for putting this all together. It's been, yeah. it's been very enjoyable. It has lovely, lovely meeting all of you guys and, uh, I'll, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier on. It's, it's, it's such a privilege to have been an important part of your lives and to have been part of a project that had such an impact and testament to the fact that it was so important is the fact that we're all on this call 10 years after the event. So uh, well done for getting this organized. Uh, well done, Laura. That was a uh, very clear, <laughs> concise organization. So uh, yeah, thank you. Next thank you. Oh, After sorry, go ahead. Both of you guys. Thank you so much for, you know, joining us today for, you know, honestly, for spending some time with us. I know it's been over a decade, well, not over a decade, it's been a decade since this game came out. And I'm sure it's pretty surprising to see so many people still invested in it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we really appreciate your time. Um, we should probably start wrapping up because I know yeah. some people have some stuff to do, places to go. Yeah. So, um, I think this would be a great place to kind of conclude things. Yeah. Um, I know Frictional is going to love this when they see it. We've got a few other projects in store. So, you know, when it comes out, we'll send you guys the links to the videos and yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you yeah, so yeah. much. Stay safe out there. Um, Have you guys. <laughs> so much. Yeah. It's okay. All right. All right. Well, signing off then. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you so